Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, good morning. It is a great pleasure to welcome you to the session Mission Area Seoul. I am Wolfgang Bircher. I am the Director General of the Directorate General for Agriculture and Rural Development in the European Commission, and I will guide you as a moderator through today's session. Missions are, as you know, a novelty in uh, the research and innovation program Horizon Europe. What are the key features, the key new features of missions? First and foremost, this is about a vision, a vision that should inspire people, is widely shared by society and allows for mobilizing resources in an unprecedented way. That is the first feature. Secondly, evidently, a mission by definition requires a clear goal, objectives, and targets. And maybe the most important feature of a mission is the new way of working together. Missions aim at pooling research and innovation activities, investments, and even policies in the new ways so that we can achieve major societal challenges and we can tackle them more effectively. So, as you see, the main novelty of uh, missions comes in particular from the process by which missions have been created and will be implemented, and we need you all on board. In this today's session, we will hear about the mission Caring for Soil is Caring for Life. It has been proposed by the Board of Experts, and two of them are with us today. I personally find this title is extremely well chosen because the general public is not necessarily always aware of the importance of soil for our societies, for food security and biodiversity. The mission's great ambition is to ensure that 75% of our soils are healthy by 2030 for food, people, nature, and climate. You can imagine that as Director General of DG Agriculture and Rural Development, I have very closely followed the development of this mission. Why? Its goal and vision are fully in line with the, object with the objectives of the common agricultural policy. Sustainable farming starts with healthy soils. Without healthy soils, we do not have sustainable farms. Soils are indeed the very basis of agricultural production and food in particular, but also forests and nature and landscape in a wider sense. As soils are not a, in a good state currently, I believe that this mission is indeed addressing a great societal challenge and I am very curious what our panelists will have to say on this. So, what are healthy soils? Why should we care about healthy soils? What can we do about it? And how can we join in the process of making soils healthy? These are just some of the questions that our panelists will address today. Before giving the floor to the panelists, let me, as finalizing my introduction, just show you a short video that shares the main elements of the, mis of the mission Caring for Soil is Caring for Life. I think it summarizes very nicely why the mission board has proposed a mission on healthy soils. Please uh, share this video widely. Did you know that without healthy soils, there would be no food on your table? That many textiles wouldn't exist? And that there wouldn't even be any wood? If we didn't have healthy soils that filter water, there would be more floods, more droughts, more carbon in the atmosphere. And definitively, less life. 
In fact, about 25% of European land is affected by water erosion. And the costs associated with soil degradation in the EU may exceed 50 billion euros per year. Without healthy soils, our planet would look very different. We have to make changes. We have to act now. It's our mission to heal the Earth together. Healthy soils, healthy planet, healthy people. Caring for soil is caring about life. I think this video made a very convincing case for healthy soils. Now I have the pleasure to introduce the panelists of today, and I would like to thank all the speakers for accepting to be with us today and representing the different views and parts of our society. I would like to start with Professor Teresa Pinto Correa. In addition to being active in research and teaching at the University of Evora in Portugal, Teresa is also the vice chair of the mission board Soil, Health and Food that has designed the mission we are talking about. Teresa, as vice chair of the mission board for the mission area on healthy soils and food, you have been working with your colleagues for a year on a definition of a mission in this area. Why do we need a mission on soil? What would a mission change? Thank you very much. Teresa, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Director General. I would like to have my PowerPoint presentation to start replying to your very important questions. So our, I'm going to present our mission. I'm going to give you some details of what we propose. So it's a proposal for a mission on the area of soil health and foods. We have this title, Caring for Soil is Caring for Life. As you have already seen in the video, if we don't take care of our soils, we will miss a lot of the life on land on, on hers we know today. So next slide, please. What is we proposed? We propose that if we don't care for soils, we don't care for life. So caring for soils is caring for life. And that we have to, in the very near future, be able to ensure that 75% of our soils are healthy and that will secure food, people, nature, and that will help mitigate or face climate change uh, as we know it's coming. So next slide, please. So why, why do we need this, this mission? And it's very important. One of the main answers to your question, why do we need soils, uh, a soil mission? is related to the lack of knowledge we have about soil. So it's, it's, it's extremely important we address this now because people generally know very little about soils. It's like an unseen resource. It's there. We, we deal every day with it, but we don't think about it as we think about other resources. And in fact, if we don't have healthy soils, we will not have nutritious and safe food. And then the soils are extremely, um, really the support of ecosystem functions like water regulation, hosting biodiversity, uh, nutrient cycling, and also the landscape and the culture of ecosystem services we know today, they result from healthy soils. And then one main and very important question is that soils are a scarce and non-renewable resources. It takes a long, long time to generate new soil. So we need to take care of the soil we have. And we, our evidence, the, the data we have collected from different sources, different European sources and scientific um, evidence shows that up to 60 or 70 percent of soils are unhealthy due to different reasons. So it's really a, a huge problem. And also in face of what is the strategy at the European level now, the Green Deal, the Farm to Fork strategy, biodiversity strategy, the zero pollution, the forestry strategy, they all are based on healthy soils. So we really uh, have, our, have soils as the key of solving many, many of the problems we want to, to solve today. Next slide, please. So we have some examples and it's only a few. It's to show you the importance or the urgency of what we propose. 
Um, if we look at or review the existing literature and the existing data, we can detect or identify that 2.8 million sites are potentially contaminated. So this creates major and, and important health risks. Up to 75% of soils have too, too high nutrient inputs. That means the risk of eutrophication of soils and water, and that will affect also biodiversity. Soil where we produce crops are losing carbon very fast. And in peatlands, we also uh, have the problem. 24% of land has very high erosion, water erosion rates. And in the countries in Southern Europe, in Central and Eastern Europe, we have also very high risk of desertification and up to 25% of our land. And what has been said already in the video, with all these problems and to try to mitigate or compensate for this, all these problems, it costs an enormous amount of money to all, all of us. So it's more than 50 billion euros per year that it costs to, to deal with all these problems. And on top of that, we have the effects of climate change, which put further pressure on soils. So it's really a, a problem which is of a very important dimension, which we need to address now if we want to revert to tendency. So please, the, the next slide. What, uh, what we want to achieve is at large, we say the 75% of soils would become, need to become healthier. And this is based on the evidence existing of how, what can be done to, to reverse the tendency. So it's not, it's a, we believe it's a realistic goal, but we know also that it will not go as fast in all the, in all the regions. There may be areas where it's more difficult than in others. So we accepted that it's maybe we will not reach the 75% of what we consider healthy, but at least we need to, to register a significant improvement, which is measurable according to indicators we have selected, so that the, the, the quality of the soils will be uh, increasing if they are below the thresholds which will be decided. So soils will be in a condition to provide essential ecosystem services in the future. Uh, the next slide. So, uh, we have defined some objectives, and these objectives are related to targets or to more quantifiable um, uh, goals. And the 75% of all soils is our general goal. We will have to, for this, to restore degraded land, so land with risks of degradation, and we want to move behind, so more than the land degradation neutrality, really reverse the tendency. We need to conserve soil organic carbon stocks. So this needs to be done all over in forests, in permanent pastures, in wetlands. We have to stop soil sealing and soil sealing occurs mainly due to urbanization. And we have to, for this, we have to increase the rate of reuse of soil reuse so that not more soil is sealed when new urbanization developments are occurring. Next slide. So these are, were our four first objectives with the related targets. Then now here we have the last, next four. So we have to reduce soil pollution and enhance restoration also with established targets. We have to prevent erosion or stop erosion on up to 50% of land, which has these unsustainable erosion rates. And at another level, we have to contribute to reduce our global footprint. So a more sustainable use of our land will make it possible to reduce the global footprint of EU and give the example of what can be done at the global level. And then the last, which is maybe one of the most important, is that we have to significantly improve what is known about soils by all citizens. So we have to improve the interest, the knowledge, the attention of all citizens for the soil they are using and which are the basis for their life. So this requires not just research, this requires action by many actors. It's people who act on soils, people who change soils, they will not change by their own. So it means that we need really to uh, have new different actions across sectors, both in rural and in urban areas. The next slide, please. So what do we what we want to, to meet with the mission objectives? We want to, if we are proposing research, but a different type of research, which is based on a system approach, considering the whole system, we need to work together across disciplines. This is extremely important. We cannot just count with natural science disciplines. We need to work also with social sciences and to work together. And different sciences are important. 
and we need to reach to, to stakeholders, to the practitioners. So we need to also work in transdisciplinarity. We want to co-construct with them the knowledge which is important. We need to acknowledge differentiation, the regional differentiation, not all soils are the same, not all the conditions are the same. We need to work across scales from the farm, from the plot to the farm, to the landscape, and then the national level for policies, the global level for the market. And we need the societal support. We will work very much based on a network of living labs and lighthouses where we can have demonstration, we can work together with stakeholders close, uh, closely at the local level. We have proposed, we propose a set of eight indicators which should be applied all over Europe, even with different thresholds, so with slightly different, uh, considering the differences in the regions, in the context, and the consistent <coughs> system of monitoring. It is not there, it is highly needed, it exists it's for other resources, we need it also for soils. We are aware that those who manage, they cannot be alone, they need these advisory services which are close to them and which are independent, and it this needs to be taken very seriously. We need to engage citizens at large and, of course, policies which are very important drivers and the private sector, also the market, need to change so that they support land managers in the change we are aiming to. So the actions of everyone are important and we want to involve from the lighthouses to the policy level, the higher policy level, we want to involve other people which are not the managers, the direct managers of the soil. The next slide, please. So what, uh, what we propose more concretely is this whole implementation of the living labs and lighthouses. So we will appeal and hope to create mechanisms in all the member states to make a denser network of, of farms and experimental sites at the, in forestry, in landscape, at landscape level, where no new knowledge is created and new solutions are tested. And lighthouses, which are good practices, examples, which can be shown and can work as dissemination, but also as exchange of ideas between practitioners, researchers, and society at large. From research point of view, we have four different steps or different topics, which have different subtopics inside. One is that we know a lot of knowledge exists out there. A lot is known, but it's not set in place. So we need to improve the uptake. We need to understand what are barriers, what are mechanisms that make it uh, not possible so far to uh, apply the existing knowledge. And we want to develop research which can help the existing knowledge to be applied. We need to develop new techniques, new technologies, new practices at different levels, both for forestry and for farming and even for urban areas and at the landscape level. And this is another, another um, group of research which is needed. So new innovation uh, in technologies and practices. We need then research which is another level, another scale, which has to do with the global food chains and to move towards a more resilient society with the contribution of everyone. So which mechanisms we can apply, how can we change the global food chain to make it more sustainable? And then we need this monitoring system, which is a very important uh, element or a contribution to be able to understand if we are going the right direction or what we need to correct. So this is the four the, the blocks of what we propose in terms of research and innovation. The next slide. Then, of course, we have this extremely important um, block, or which is the communication and citizen engagement. It is ongoing. We have done already a lot. And of course, the COVID crisis didn't help to meet people. So we had, from March on, we had to do most of it online. But we have created this small video you have seen, there's other videos going on, there's a lot of actions going on on the field. There have been events in fairs, there have been discussion, citizen engagement events, which was, was done in, in different countries. So there is, there is a lot going on, but we need to do much more. We really need to widespread the message that the soil is vital for the life on Earth, and all, all citizens need to be engaged. So this is about communication, citizen engagement. It has started, it will continue. It's a very important part of our, uh, of our mission. Next slide, please. So what we expect to, to obtain with this mission, we, we expect that this debate on the soil and the changes we are aiming for will uh, launch or will start this systemic transformation which is needed across our EU territories and the value chains we are part of. It will change practices in agriculture, in forestry and urban areas, which will be 
maintaining or very carefully taking care of the ecosystem services they support. This will lead also to more to the possibility to have more nutritious and safe food and to change the, the, the value change, which will, more, will be more bio-based, food and bio-based value change, will more looking or rewarding friendly practices. Soil will help us to mitigate climate change. Consumers will be more aware of their role and we will lower our global footprint. So this is where we expect to act and we expect to have an impact with our soil uh, health and food mission. And then the next slide, I think it's the last one. And I would like to, yeah, the next slide, please. I would like to thank you very much for your attention. I hope I've been made clear what we are aiming at. And I look forward to the presentation of the next speakers, which will contribute or complement what I have just said. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Teresa, for this succinct but comprehensive outline of the challenges we are facing, the ambitions that you have with the sole mission, and in particular also designing the, the elements that we have to address these challenges, the solutions. And in this context, I found it particularly interesting that evidently farmers, foresters have to contribute to the soil health, but there are many other actors who are quite important to deliver on healthy soils. And you have referred to the food chain, waste and other industries, uh, urban planning. So there are many actors that are uh, important to address these challenges. And secondly, what I found particularly interesting was your reference to the living labs and the lighthouses, which I think are quite important to roll out science in practical terms and ensuring cooperation across sectors and disciplines. And that brings me to the next panelist, which is uh, Alfred Grant. He's a member, he's also a member of the mission board of Soil Health and Food. But first and foremost, Alfred is a farmer from Austria and an entrepreneur developing quite um, uh, innovative techniques to improve soil health. He works closely with scientists, and I dare say that he is a real ambassador crossing the borders between science and practices. And my question to uh, Alfred, and I ask him to stay within the six minutes if possible, is the following one. Alfred, as someone who works with soil every day, why is it important to have lighthouses and living labs? And what does the mission title mean to you? Alfred, the floor is yours. Thank you for this question, Wolfgang. Let me answer it by telling you a short story. So a lot of farmers are confronted with uh, soils like this. So this is uh, really like a brick. And you can even hear that this soil is not healthy. It doesn't infiltrate water. The root cannot penetrate it, so it doesn't fulfill the functions that we expect from soil. So farmers come up with some ideas how they can cope with such problems. And there was one guy, Jeff Moya, who came up with the idea to grow cover crops, which are not harvested, but then they are rolled down and he seeded the cash crop into the mulch, so into the layer that was protecting the soil. Another one came up with the idea to say, okay, Let's take lucerne hay, which is not needed on this field, and bring it over to another field and cover the soil there, use it like a blanket, so the soil is protected from water uh, erosion, protected from the sun, from the wind. So we on our farm, we have a lighthouse farm already, and we are working close in a project called uh, AP Agri, the European Innovation Partnership for Agriculture, on an operational group where we uh, try these techniques and try to bring them over into our region on our farm. So what we did is that, and I brought you some plants here, and you can see that there is mulch on top of this plant. And if I open it up, you can see how loose the soil is and how good the penetration of the roots is, and how many roots are there. So what we do is on a lighthouse farm that we can 
work together with scientists, bring in the innovations, the ideas from the farmers, but then evaluate it together with the scientists and with other stakeholders from the industry, from the society. And we can uh, produce healthy soil, which then can produce a healthy plant producing healthy fruits. But why should consumer, why should citizen uh, recognize that? Why should be there an awareness? So what we also do, we raise awareness on a citizen level because we can grow healthy food on healthy soil. So maybe, can you smell the aromatic scent of these herbs? Do you feel and even hear how fresh this salad is? Or do you hear how crisp the carrot is? Or how tasty these tomatoes are? So there is a lot of things that we can demonstrate on a lighthouse farm. And at the end, we could even demonstrate it online. Let's say, for example, on a on the research and innovation days in 2020. So this would be an example. So this is why we need lighthouse farms. And this is why we need working together closely to have the approach from the farmer, from the practitioner, from the forester, but on the other side, also the approach, the perspective from the scientists to evaluate, evaluate things and to bring things together. So we have uh, sustainable solutions that regenerate to help to regenerate our soils. And at the end, this is the reason why our mission board chair came up with the slogan, with the title, caring for soil is caring for life. Because if we care about our soil, as you can see here, then we care about the life not only of the farmers, but the whole societies, the citizens, the food production and not of the people living now on this planet, but also for the next generation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alfred, for your refreshing views of a practitioner regarding soil, soil life, soil health. And I think you have all convinced us about the added value of farmers working together with scientists and with consumers and about the importance of, of living labs. Thank you very much for this uh, great presentation. Uh, I would like now to give the floor to um, Mariana De Bernardini. We have just heard a very experienced farmer. Now we have a uh, young farmer, certainly also very experienced. And like Alfred, she's preaching two worlds. She is associated to Wageningen University, but she also represents the European Council of Young Farmers. So Mariana, you have already participated in a, a citizen engagement event organized during the summer and Teresa has just referred to the importance of involving citizens in this uh, mission, because after all, this is about something that should inspire our societies, in fact, and it requires all actors to deliver. So you have experience with these citizens' uh, uh, involvement and feedback. What do you, as young farmers, think about this mission and how do you get involved? Can everybody hear me? Hopefully, yes. Yes, it's fine. Um, perfect. So thank you, Director General, for that introduction. Um, and thank you to the Commission for inviting the voice of young farmers on the stage. Uh, indeed, my name is Mariana De Bernardini, and I'm the sustainability liaison between CESIA and Farming Systems Ecology Group at Wageningen University, which is where I'm calling from today. So greetings from the Netherlands. My job is to bring young farmers to researchers and researchers to young farmers. And while I'm not a young farmer myself, um, I've been over the past year learning from our board and our members, most of whom are young farmers, um, about what type of knowledge they need and how best to transmit that knowledge. 
And what we found is that there is a huge advantage to using real life on-farm examples as vessels of knowledge. So in this sense, the living lab and the lighthouse farm concepts um, that tackle the challenges of soil degradation are a very welcome approach and we very much welcome this mission. Um, they provide young people with the inspiration of what a farm could look like uh, for its ecosystem, for the surroundings, and for the people whose livelihoods depend on it. The opportunity to visit, see, taste, feel, hear, just like Alfred showed us, the land and soil, plants and animals, it can be hugely inspiring. Not to mention the opportunity to speak with a farmer about their history, how they got to where they are, and what types of challenges they face along the way. It's a unique opportunity. So we're, we experienced this firsthand in December. We brought young farmers to Wacheningen, and we met to discuss with 11 of the global network of lighthouse farmers, one of whom is Alfred Grand. And one of the things that I love about this, about working in agriculture and soil science, is that, as we've heard repeatedly, it's fundamentally a human activity. And I see that that's beginning to permeate into research and innovation through the encouragement of these multi-actor projects, which I, I, we very much applaud. However, there is one maybe small flaw with these multi-actor projects, and that's that they don't always fully acknowledge or compensate the humans that they are very much relying on. So for young farmers to participate in these projects, it is an incredible opportunity, sometimes. And sometimes as research goes, the results are not very conclusive and it's not completely applicable for them or for those in their network. And we have to acknowledge this, that farmers' time deserves then appropriate financial compensation, that it's not enough to say that participating in these research projects is, is enough compensation. Um, their travel, food, lodging, the cost of missing a day on the farm, that can all add up. And multi-actor projects, then they need to have a budgetary framework for these types of allotments. What we often see with multi-actor projects is that they first reach out to young farmer associations, and rightfully so. Young farmer associations are a fabulous resource to tap into. It's a way to cast a wide net on the relevant young farmers that maybe can be involved in these projects. And I do wanna thank the mission board for already placing a special emphasis on the need to reach out to young professionals. However, these young farmer associations, they have traditionally focused on uh, policy and advocacy, and sometimes they even lack the resources to participate in these uh, research projects. Therefore, there needs to be time and investment in establishing trust and understanding of how these organizations function. Uh, one way could be, for example, by inviting young farmer associations uh, and other actors, other relevant actors, depending on the project, to see firsthand lighthouses and living labs as an ex in an exploratory way, such as those within the global network of lighthouse farms. For me personally, the mission will be accomplished once we can confidently say that all young farmers are provided with the opportunity and the know-how to be involved in research and innovation regarding soil health. So I want to thank you again very much for your attention and for this wonderful opportunity to speak to you. Thank you very much, Mariana, for your ideas how to best involve young farmers in our missions, but also setting out the bottlenecks and the framework conditions that sometimes hinder young farmers to take part in these activities. So thank you very much for these ideas. I think we all agree that it is our overall objective that young farmers, as they are the future of the farming community in Europe, should be involved in this very important uh, 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 challenge to improve soil health because they can do a lot in these terms and we have to put in place the right framework conditions that permits their participation. But evidently we need also to get young generation, young people generally involved in this mission because they are aware about the challenges we are facing as, as, as mankind and they have the possibility to uh, raise their voices, ideas, and enthusiasm, and thus become part of the mission. So again, many thanks uh, to you, Mariana. 
Now I have the last panelist here. It is Bastien Sachet. He is CEO of the Earthworm Foundation, an organization that works on specific projects with partners along the value chain. The aim of Earthworm is to drive change, break down barriers and build solutions across different sectors. And uh, my question to Bastien is the following one. Bastien, how can businesses from the food chain support soil health? Can you give us some practical examples? What do you expect the mission caring for soil? What do you expect from this mission caring for soil is caring for uh, life? Bastien, floor is yours. Thank you and, uh, and uh, good morning, everyone. I think uh, what the, the mission has set out as, uh, as, as the objective, which is cultivating soil health for life, is, uh, is, is inspiring to me. Uh, three years ago, I, we've been working a lot on forests as an organization, trying to get rid of deforestation in supply chains. And uh, we've, we've, you know, I, I realized if we are to regenerate the world in general, we have to look at soils. The problem is soils for businesses is the last priority on the agenda. It used to be. Um, businesses would react mostly to NGO campaigns who would tell them, hey, you've got children working in your plantation or you've got deforestation happening. And they would focus their sustainability policies mostly on those topics. Therefore, soil would come, you know, at point um, three dash, you know, for A, C, B, B, C, D, you know, the last thing that would be looked after uh, in, a, in a sustainability criteria. And we went to our historical partner, Nestle, and we told them, you have to look at soil health because it is important for climate, for biodiversity, and basically for the resilience of your food supply. Um, we, we, we contacted them and we started a small project three years ago in the north of France, with the aim to say, okay, let's cultivate soil health. Let's, let's put it back at the center of your priority as a business. What happened last year is that every company, and I think this week they are meeting as we speak, every company has made a climate pledge. The link between soil health and carbon sequestration and climate has been established very clearly. Um, and a lot of the work that scientists have been doing for 20 years has been surfacing. And so now business realize that soil is important. It also connects with the need from consumers to have more healthy food. And everyone knows that healthy food come with healthy plants. And healthy plants, which means using less pesticides, etc., cetera, is uh, you know, enabled by healthy soils. So the good news is that uh, we've managed to get the attention of a few business to put soil at the center of the agenda. Nestle was the first, but we then, from the rotation of the farmer, we reached out to everyone else who produces crops in the region north of France. So we went to see Bonduel, which is a leader of fruit and vegetables. We went to see McCain, who produced the potato, who, who buys the potatoes. We went to see Lidl, the supermarket that uh, uses uh, also potatoes and vegetables. And now we are engaging with the animal feed, who's using some of the legume crops, and of course, Nestle for cereals, and another company that works on oils and vegetable oils. So basically, we now have all the actors of the crop rotation that are joining forces in a landscape to do a few things. So what is it that we do? The first thing is that we are not going to create a new label or a new uh, certification schemes. There are too many in agriculture today, uh, uh, in our sense, but we're going to start to measure soil health. And then we realized, oh, but measuring soil health, we don't know how to do that. We have to reach out to the scientists. So we reached out to Professor Boivin, who I think some of you know is the president of European Soil Scientists Association, I think at the moment. And he said, look, there's lots of work on how to measure soil health. Why don't you use this and that? And the great news is science can be quite complex, but by working together with the scientists, the farmers, we try to come up with something practical that allows us 
to measure and evaluate soil health. And with the idea to have something like, you know, the energy ratings, A, B, C, D, E, F, you find on, on, uh, on uh, appliances or on washing machines or fridges, basically to have the same for soils so that any farmer could see where his field is at. Is it in a bad situation? Is it in an okay situation? Is it really a good situation? And then take it from there. Because with that measurement on soil health, to which we couple a measurement on carbon sequestration. We have the opportunity to do many things, to target training, to incentivize people into the transition, or to remunerate people for ecosystem services that they're producing. So we're having in, uh, we, we made a lot of progress in these last three years. There's still a lot to be done, but gladly we have a number of farmers within company supply chains that are starting to measure soil health, that are starting to measure baseline carbon sequestration. And then with, with scientific validated scientific methodologies that will be refined as we go. So this is one thing. The second thing is we've created an ecosystem which we believe is not just the business. The business are a key part of it because they are the main messengers to the farmers, but in parallel, the local authorities, the, the institutions, the agricultural chambers, the extension services, the region, all are involved in discussing. So that at landscape level, we have a, I would say, I would call it an unusual collaboration of actors who are not used to work together, but who are developing solutions, you know, to transform the, the, the supply chain and, and eventually to transition, help farmers transition from a conventional type of agriculture to our, to, towards a soils friendly agriculture. I insist, we are not specifying practices. We are not saying to farmers, you should not do this or you should not plow your soil. We know that, you know, better soil health is, is obtained by some of these techniques, but we don't want to specify techniques. We said, build soil health and you've got a thousand ways to do it. And that opens potentialities for innovation uh, at farm level, but also between the farmer and its client. Um, so what do we expect from the mission? We expect to have a partner that can both, you know, help co-design some of what we do. Of, you know, the setting up indicators for soil health is part of it. Um, bringing different stakeholders into the mix is, is also part of, of, uh, of, of, the, of what's needed for success. On our side, we believe what we are learning in the landscape is also, are also things that can be replicated. And I think the beauty of the mission is that it has a European focus with many connections that we don't have and which tomorrow can help replicate what will be innovated in the landscapes. So um, it, it's a big project. We've got uh, big companies being involved and in driving this regeneration agenda uh, committed to soils. Now um, we, we, will, uh, we will explore everything that, is, that can be done in collaboration with the mission and the great talents and expertise that it brings. So I look forward to the collaboration and I look forward to everything that can be achieved in Europe uh, with that soil leadership. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bastien, for this very promising statement. And it's really great to see that food industries, that the processors are already taking interest in this, in this uh, soil health, which is promising because it will also lead to behavioral change at, at farmers' level, I'm sure. So, dear colleagues, dear uh, uh, virtual listeners to our session, I have to conclude. I think soil matters to all of us. They are the basis of our food, our lives, and our planet. Secondly, the mission comes at the right moment. And thirdly, and I think the most important thing is, we can achieve the objectives of this mission only by working together very closely across the different sectors. I would like to thank the panelists, the speakers, with, for their excellent presentations and certainly I would like to thank uh, the virtual public for their interest in the mission caring for soil is caring for life. Thank you very much. <laughs>